Hello, good afternoon. Ash from London here, uh, speaking to you from a very stormy New Zealand at the moment. We're in the middle of this uh, this uh, weather front that's been described as a atmospheric river. Something I've never heard of before, but uh, seems to mean lots of uh, heavy rain and uh, strong winds. But anyway, good day to be indoors. Uh, okay, so this um, this video is a bit impromptu one, really. I was um, wasn't really planning this. Well, in the long term, I was. I was uh, I was thinking of a, a way of um, doing a video about um, CDs and the way they're packaged and marketed and whatnot. But I was listening to the radio the other day on the BBC and uh, heard an item about um, compact discs uh, celebrating their fortieth anniversary, apparently this week. So I thought oh, that's a good excuse to um, talk about. Um, these little items have become a big part of our lives for the last uh, 40 years. Uh, apart from me, I didn't really get into them until the early 90s, but um, yeah, they kind of like dominated uh, music sales for a long time. They're in, on the decline now, uh, in decline now I should say, um, but with a slight um, increase recently apparently. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I think a bit like vinyl has um, been a bit of an interest in this kind of retro way we listen to music, I mean people are even buying cassettes nowadays, but uh, yeah I thought, you know, a little excuse to chat about CDs for um, for a few minutes. Okay, they were actually invented at the end of the 70s, and that's 79 I think the first one was produced, it wasn't until um, uh, 82, and that's when they were actually marketed to the public, the, the first release, official release I think was ABBA's The Visitors album, which I'm, I'm afraid I don't have a copy of to show you. But um, it was developed as a joint venture between um, the Dutch company Philips and Sony uh, from Japan. Uh, part of the brief was uh, from Sony, they wanted to um, fit the, the whole of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony on one disc, which is about 63 minutes long. And uh, evidence of that, that I have, there it is, all on one disc, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. So um, that was done, and I think you could get a more on about 20 minutes more music on that in the later years i don't know whether there was limitations in the early days of um cds but uh there we go that's um that was achieved and uh there we go that kind of started the whole thing off now um like i say i didn't really get into um buying cd i've, I've always been a vinyl fanatic but i do own a lot of cds and uh, some things Particularly during the 90s and in their heyday, it was just an easier way of uh, buying music and cheaper as well because um, they do tend to be cheaper than uh, vinyl. And uh, this has been viewed before on my uh, my channel here in my one of my 90s videos. The very first CD I, CD I bought was this REM Out of Time, which came out in 1991, which is uh, when I got my very first CD player. Now, um, okay, it was a high technology, it was a great thing to have a CD. Um, there's a bit of novelty value in it, uh, far more portable than uh, vinyl. It's kind of like a halfway mark between vinyl and tapes really. But uh, along with the, the, uh, the high technology of the discs themselves, they came with the low technology in my opinion of the packaging because they have these awful things called jewel cases which have been the bane of my life really. I just can't, can't stand them. They're uh, Cheap, nasty, brittle plastic, easily break. Uh, I don't know. They just scratch. They're just not very nice things at all, really. So, but I do have a lot of them, unfortunately. Uh, just uh, part of it, I suppose. Um, there were variations on the on the on the jewel case. There was a, this was a, the standard size for um, album releases. There was a thinner one, a slim slimmer one, but. Um, kind of a bit narrow, which came was used for singles mainly. I've got an ACDC single there called Big Gun, which was um, this, I mean the CD is still the same size, but the um, the the packaging was a lot smaller, a lot more limited. There's only like one little piece of uh, card in for the uh, the um, single title there. And then of course, um, if it was a double CD in the early days, it came in one of these. This was uh, one of the Beatles anthology things, which is a great big. Basically, twice the width of the uh, the regular size thing. With these rather cumbersome double hinge thing going on with the uh, the CD. Oops, booklet falling out there. It's CD one on one side, and then CD two on the other. On that side, um, with a bit of dead space in the middle. 
but they, they got ever more inventive with those uh, and whenever there was a um, need for um, more discs to be stored they kept the size the same but put in different um, holders and levers and things and I've got an example of that here with this um, oh this came out when did this come out I forgot when this was released uh, da 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 H&M. it came out in the early 90s I think it was um, Metallica's first live album uh, Live Shit Minge and Purge which was originally out on video okay, but I've got the DVD CD version this had five discs of course DVDs of the same size as uh, CDs and uh, the packaging was the same size as a double C double CD but in here there are five discs there's three DVDs and um, oh, sorry three CDs and two DVDs and it's kind of the same kind of storage for the regular the regular slots but there again you see you've got an extra disc slot in there there's um where is it now another disc in there on that that side and then if you fold out the uh the initial tray you can see there's a another disc in there as well so that's a way of keeping uh storing five discs in the same size packaging pretty much as a a regular double CD album, but they were still horrible, brittle plastic things. And uh, when the Digipack came along, I thought that was a much uh, nicer improvement. I got an example of that here, an old Dead Mouse album, and um, this was a lot better. It still had the plastic um, mount inside, which did get broken sometimes, but it had this much nicer cardboard outer. See, there's the um, CD mounted on the um, plastic I think it's a button I think it's called um, inside there you can see um, which is pretty much the same as uh, the jewel case but um, a lot nicer um, just just a whole nicer feel a whole nicer and not quite as um, uh, big as the uh, jewel case and uh, just quite a lot, lot tidier that was improved even more though when they started uh, recreating the, um, the kind of vinyl version of the, of the sleeves. Um, I've got an example here. This came as a little box set. It was a Smiths. Uh, they re-released -re all their um, albums on the CD and reproduced the uh, packaging on a smaller scale from the album. So you've got um, things like you know, the Smiths' first album with the original liner sleeve inside, which is a um, much nicer way of presenting the CDs, I think. Um, the Hatful of Hollow there, uh, which is um, they re also recreated the gatefold aspects of uh, a lot of these as well, and it uh, all came in a very nice compact box. Um, which is like that, really nice and tidy. There's a little booklet in there as well to tell you all about the CDs, which is interesting because the original box sets of CDs uh, they used the same size as vinyl. I've got an example here. This is a Led Zeppelin's box set that came out in 1990 which is a vinyl size box, pretty much the same size as the um, vinyl edition. Uh, different information on, of course, because it's all about CDs, and, but the CD still came in jewel cases. Um, as you can see inside, those are the, uh, the, four, the four CDs that came, came in that box set, all padded out with foam, <laughs> foam rubber. Uh, which is where the vinyl would have fitted. I, th I think it was a six vinyl set that originally, but um, yeah, that's how um, CD box sets were originally. Probably a cheaper way, doing the same size as uh, was. But then, of course, um, as years went by, people got more invented, very inventive. And um, got uh, some example here of uh, books. That, um, there's a way where they release CDs. Um, Blur's Think Tank, for example, came in this little hardback book. Um, utilising the uh, Banksy artwork there as a just a little gold gold leaf print on there, but uh, yeah, it's basically a little booklet. So you get all the information for the CD in, inside there, and some artwork and stuff. And all these pages, and then the CD is just slotted into the back there. Sorry, a bit of a bit of a bit glary today, isn't it? The CD just slotted in there. Now some some artists went a bit overboard. Uh, for example, Iron Maiden, uh, their last two albums were released as a uh, limited edition book editions. You've got uh, Book of Souls, which I've already featured on this uh, channel, and uh, Senjutsu, which was uh, re released last year. And then they came, I'll show you the Senjutsu one, they come in these uh, rather elaborate 
elaborate hardback books. And they start with lots of lovely artwork. And uh, the CDs are housed. See that the artwork inside and the, all the lyrics and the uh, information all throughout the book. And the, the CDs are housed um, in the back. They said both double CDs, so they're quite a long album. So this is a much nicer way to present the uh, the double CDs and the and that original horrible plastic thing. These are you know, quite quite robust items. But anyway, and then there are, I've got some examples of other um, inventiveness that's been gone on through the presentation of CDs. Um, die cuts is always quite popular. Uh, this was um, the second album by of Monsters of Men. Which, um, when did this come out? Where are we? 2015 this came out, yeah. Um, bit, bit, bit of die cut going on, so you've got, got the um, little booklet comes out like that. And it's... Uh, CD just slotted in the uh, in the end there, and you've got a nice little gatefold, double gatefold sleeve. So that, that's quite a nice use of um, the, the sleeve there. Uh, ra uh, Radiohead have um, got quite a few different examples of uh, creativity in the way they present their CDs. Um, I'm going to show you this one. This is uh, in Rainbows, which I think came out. When did this come out? Oh, I can't remember when it came out now. But anyway, what they did was they um, released it in this little wallet it's like a little folder thing here it opens up at the back like that and then you get the cd it comes in a little uh, little sleeve of its own there that's the, the cds in there but what happens is with this you get um a selection of stickers the idea being that you buy a blank jewel case and uh, put the stickers on the jewel case that, that was for the the back and the the, the sides and then um, this um, was like a, a transparent one with the album title in rainbows, of course. Um, goes on the front, and then you slot in the uh, booklet, and then that becomes uh, the front cover. So I thought that was quite a nice one. I obviously haven't uh, utilised it in that way. I've just kept it in its, in its packaging, um, which I thought was a nicer, nice way of keeping it, really, because uh, that was uh, in rainbows from Radiohead. Um, if you remember, I don't saw my Sisma the Down um, video, they released a double album where each album was six months apart and uh, when you bought the CDs they slotted together to form the double album. Well, um, the band Stone Sour did a similar thing, or they, went, they took up a notch <laughs> and uh, they released two albums, one in 2012 I think it was, and one in 2013, uh, which was a, con a double concept album called... Uh, the House of Golden Bones. So you got part one there, and then uh, part two. And what happened with these was um, when you fold out the sleeve, you can slot them together, and they. Um, if you can make that out, I'm, I'm actually constructed it properly. It forms a house, so th this will be uh, part of the roof. So you, um, I'll show you on the other one. You can see they've got die cut windows on this on this one. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, if you slot those two together, you get a little house kind of forms, which is a just a, it's a bit gimmicky, but uh, just quite quite a nice item to have. I haven't, like I say, I haven't built it properly because I think once you slot it in, it's a bit messy to un unfold. So I don't want to damage any of the tabs or anything. But uh, yeah, that was that was quite an interesting use of uh, the sleeve. Uh, one album that came out earlier than that, it was nineteen ninety seven, and I, when I bought this, I Looking back, I wish I'd bought two coppers and kept one uh, in mint condition because this has got a bit damaged over the years. Uh, the album was by Spiritualized, and this is very, very um, creative. It's uh, made to look like a, uh, a tablet box that you get from uh, from the pharmacy. <clears throat> so you've got um, Spiritualized. It's uh, the album is "Ladies and Gentlemen, We Are Floating in Space." Uh, you, you get one tablet, which is uh, seventy minutes long. <laughs> And uh, inside the tablet is actually in a, in a little sealed pack, like an actual tablet would, would come. So you got a CD in there. So obviously open, opened up there with the CD. You see the CD inside there. Sorry, a bit glary again. Where are we? Get the CD out. Actually. There's a CD. And uh, they've even gone as far as uh, all the credits and. and uh, Things for for the CD are on a piece of paper that's very similar to the uh, information you get with a 
medication from uh, stuff like this. So yeah, that's all the uh, the credits and the um, the what is written around. What are the possible side effects of spiritualized, and uh, what should I do if my symptoms persist, and all that? It's got kind of a bit of comedy involved as well. But uh, I thought oh, that, that was quite nice. And uh, I've got one more to show you here. So this is what the problem is: that the things falling apart. That's the part of the box coming off there. Uh, another in interesting uh, bit of packaging here was uh, by Tool. This was on their um, uh, Ten Thousand Days album, and I don't think I've ever seen this in any other way. I don't think it's a, it was. I think it was a limited edition, but it, it came in with these uh, rather splendid three D glasses. Because um, what he did was. You open up inside, see all this artwork, set it up so that the artwork is um, propped up against the inner sleeve there. You peer through peer through the glasses and uh, get a nice, you get, well, probably can't see it on here, but you get a nice uh, 3D effect if you can line that up. But yeah, you get, basically I get 3D of all the, of all the uh, patterns, which believe me, is very impressive. But... Um, I thought that, that that was quite a nice, inventive way of uh, presenting the the CD. Uh, what year did that come out? This came out in um, two thousand six. That was a that was a follow up to the successful um, Lateralis uh, CD. But anyway, so anyway, there you go. There's a little selection of some CDs to celebrate the fortieth anniversary of its invention, or rather, of its um, marketing year, should we say? Uh, right, okay, um, my next video is going to be a bit more planned, um, be another top 10, so uh, happy birthday to the CD. Uh, it's on, on, um, it's uh, on the rise again, apparently, CD sales are going up, and you, you, they're still around, I mean, whenever I go to the record store, there's always a lot of new, all the new albums seem to be still being available on CD, so it could be... Uh, could be on for a return to favour. Who knows? Right, that's me done today. I uh, hope you found that interesting. Uh, once again, thank you for being there, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.